referring expression, referential, and attributive uses, and anaphoric reference. So good day everyone. So for this time, we're going to report about the assigned topic for us, which is the referring expression, referential and attributive uses, and anaphoric reference. What is referring expression? So in my first slide, I have the here referring expression as equivalent to linguistic forms and linguistic forms equivalent to referring expression. So you might wonder what is linguistic forms since I've mentioned it that linguistic form is equivalent to referring expression. So linguistic forms are what the speaker or the writer uses to enable a listener or a reader to identify something such as the proper noun, the definite noun phrase, indefinite noun phrase, and the pronoun. So when you say proper noun, I have here the example, example which is William Shakespeare. Then the definite noun, the poet. Since we all know that William Shakespeare is a poet, and then in definite noun, we have a poet. Then in the pronoun, we have he since. So to give you a more actual representation, I have here a diagram to present about the linguistic form or the referring expression. So to further elaborate here, the referring expression or linguistic form as at the top and then pointing down the proper noun, definite noun phrase, and definite noun phrase, and the pronoun which comprises the referring expression or the linguistic form. So it, as you can see, proper noun emphasizes specific name basically. And the definition I mean in the definite noun phrase it is highlighted there that it uses the article the so as what you observe to the previous example I've said that instead of saying that the William Shakespeare I change it into the poet yes since in definite noun phrase you used article the and then followed by common noun and then in definite noun phrase you use the article a or un and followed by the noun common noun and then the pronoun we have first second and third person so in connection with linguistic forms which is equivalent to referring expression it is said that we define the reference as somewhat an act in which the speaker uses linguistic forms below that we have the speaker then a road following is the refers, then intention, and then the meaning. If you can see, and basically just telling the process of how the reference work, in which the speaker makes the reference, and with the intention of how the reference is used, and then the meaning of what the speaker is intended to say. An example for the reference, you have the reference as usual activity in communication, it is not unusual for people to want to refer some entity or a person without knowing exactly which name would be the best word to use. Just, uh, I mean, it is common for us not to use a kind of reference or to, to name something which is not the specific name. Just for the sake nga, imo lang siyang name. For example, I have here I have here an example sentence below. Here is Mr. Aftershave is late today. So Mr. Aftershave here is obviously not the specific name of the person. But Mr. Aftershave here refers to the person, refers to the specific person in an indirect way. So basically, we don't know who is this aftershave, so Mr. Aftershave, but the speaker knows what he is referring to. So therefore, it is the speaker who refers and the listener who infers. So, so referring expression is a linguistic form, and linguistic form are those noun, 
the proper noun rather and then the definite and indefinite noun phrase and the pronoun so the linguistic the use of linguistic form is also termed as reference so for the next topic which is the referential and attributive use in referring expression we have Rikame Matbagon to discuss Rikame so I just wanted to say thank you for Dan Noel Baclado for the introduction of our report on referring expressions and referential and attributive uses in Anafore. So right now I'm going to talk about the referential uses and attributive uses. So if you listen to Ms. Shaina and Geraldine's report uh, from the previous meeting, they've talked about the reference and inference, right? So you might have come to a conclusion that not all referring expressions have identifiable real word reference. So that is why I am here today to further explain to you the differences between the two referential and attributive uses and to give you an existing um, examples for you to clearly understand the topic and referring expressions, attributive and referential uses in pragmatics. So are you ready? Introduction to referential and attributive uses. It is important to recognize that not all referring expressions have identifiable physical reference. Indefinite noun phrases can be used to identify a physically present entity, but they can also be used to describe entities that are assumed to exist but unknown or entities that as far as we know do not exist. So take for example, I'm going to give you three sentences. So the first one is, there's a man waiting for you outside. A man waiting for you outside, it is a referent that is physically present entity. Um, the second one is, he wants to marry a woman with lots of money. A woman with lots of money does exist, but it is still unknown. The last sentence is, We'd love to find a nine foot tall basketball player. The referent, um, a nine foot tall basketball player is so impossible to find, and there's a possibility that, is, that it does not exist. But those examples of sentences I gave may either be referential or attributive uses. In attributive uses, these sentences may refer to whoever or whatever fits the description. But in referential uses, it does refer to a certain someone, even though his or her name is not stated. So, let me give you another example. Let's say, he wanted to marry a woman with lots of money. In referential uses, the speaker is referring to a certain person, but it does sound like he wanted to marry any woman that fits the description, right? But deep inside, the speaker is really referring into someone specifically, but the speaker is more interested in using a woman with lots of money instead of stating a name. But in attrib attributive uses, this statement means that he wanted to marry any woman with lots of money. It does exist, but the identity of the woman is unknown, as attributive uses refers to anything or anyone that fits the description. So for you to understand this topic completely, let me give you the last examples in referential and attributive uses. So this example is from a local um, local news report. So it says that the local police department reported there was no sign of the killer. This sentence can be inter interpreted differently. If the killer has been seen or he or she escaped, this would be a referential use of the referring expressions because the speaker knows that the, that the referent exists. If the identity of the killer is completely unknown and there's not even a certainty that this killer exists, this would be an, an attributive use. The speaker doesn't know if the referent exists, but she means anybody that fits the description of the killer. 
So to sum up this topic, you should always remember this. Referential uses refers to a specific person that is physically present, while attributive uses refers to anything or anyone that fits the description and the referent is still unknown. So for the next topic, we have the anaphoric reference. So what is anaphoric reference? So anaphoric reference, it differs in the sense that it has lots of references but has an initial or a center entity that being referred to. For instance, in the film, a man and a woman were trying to wash a cat. The man was holding the cat while the woman poured water in it. He said something to her and they started laughing. If you will try to observe with the sentences, they only those sentences and those references inside those sentences has only referred refers to a one entity which is the man in the film and the woman in the film all of those preceding references refers to the first references or we call it in other sense initial reference and that is the antecedent because when you say anaphora it has the antecedent at the at the very beginning and then followed by descriptions followed by descriptions but still that description is still referring to the antecedent and in this case anaphora references does that so anaphora and antecedent in english initial references or introductory mention is often indefinite a man a woman a cat in the example the definite pronoun race the man the cat the woman and the pronouns it he her they are subsequent reference to already introduced reference generally known as anaphoric references or anaphora so if naka-observe mo ato to sa previous sentence ang initial reference dito is katong a man and a woman and a cat you know why because katong a man a woman and a cat kay in the previous ato gi explain mong god nga in the film a man in the film so basically it refers to a certain entity that's why it is also termed as the initial reference because it introduces the entity it first introduces the entity which is being mentioned also from those preceding references and those preceding references are also called the subsequent references or also termed as the anaphoric reference or the anaphora in technical term the second or subsequent expression the anaphora and the initial is the antecedent so in other sense katong a man a woman a cat in a film mo sila ang na serve as the antecedent since there was there there is no direct antecedent being mentioned but though there is a reference that is referring to a certain entity that's why in the in those in the previous case of the sentence nga which I showed you in the previous slide, a man and a woman there in the film serves as the antecedent because it refers to the certain entity. And in this case, we have the a man, the man, he, and a woman, the woman, she, then he, plus she, then they. The a man there is the antecedent. Then the man is the anaphora as well as the he. Then a woman there a woman then the woman and she and so on in reference there is a basic collaboration at work intention to identify and recognition of intention this process is done by speaker listener and convention between the members in the social community so when you say intention to identify it is when you are making a utterances of course not a reference and you have the intention to identify that certain reference then also along with that you have to recognize also the intention what how does 
the intention to the identity was acted or was demonstrated by the speaker in his sample utterances in his references so next we have the zero and a four hour ellipsis so what is zero and a four hour ellipsis the use of zero and a four hour clearly creates an expectation that the listener will be able to infer who or what the speaker intends to identify as you can see in these examples we have the peel an onion and slice it the number two drops the slice into hot oil then cook for three minutes as you can see peel an onion on first can okay, refer to siyang it which is the reference then drops the slices into the hot oil on the slices of course the slices of onion that is being referred Kanina. And as well as cook for 3 minutes. So, once may cook, of course, the topic or the entity that is mentioned in the previous, which is the onion, moto siyang i-cook. So, basically, it has zero anaphora. So, to explain further, we have this. When the interpretation requires us to identify an entity and non-linguistic expression is presented, it is called zero and a four hour ellipsis for example let's peel it's not real peel an onion and slice it drop the slices into hot oil then cook for three minutes so once may cook so supposedly there is something lacking for you to there is a reference na ka ng lacking in that sentence na cook for three minutes so once may cook so supposedly you should put there as you can see ng butang ko ka ng the and the four so zero and a four or, or ellipsis and you have to just put it ka ng him oh him them rather cook them for three minutes oh to to make it more ka ng sabutable nga ka ng ang yung dimension it has reference then yung dimension is the onion but in this case zero and a four dimension so wala siya reference awa siya ka ng linguistic expression rather so therefore cook for three minutes it's already understandable sa ka ng listener especially if they have a shared language so key takes away the key to make sense of reference is the pragmatic process whereby speakers select linguistic expression with intention of identifying certain entities and with the assumption that the listener will collaborate and interpret those expressions as the speakers intended. So next, successful reference means that an intention was recognized via inference, indicating a kind of shared knowledge and hence social connection. 